Please try this question on your own before moving on by pausing the video. For part A of the question, we're going to draw a window that has a layer of air trapped between it. Now this window would be known as a compound slab, as the textbook calls it, because you have layers of different materials. You've got your first layer of glass followed by a different layer filled with air and then another layer that goes back to glass. There could have been a fourth layer with maybe a different material, but in this case there wasn't. So we nevertheless have a compound slab and there's a formula that describes the rate of energy transfer through a compound slab. So let's look at that. So there's kind of a lot going on in this equation. You probably want to pause and slowly read through what each variable stands for in the equation. It turns out that the term Q divided by delta T can simply be replaced with a single variable that we can call P, which is going to stand for the power. Power is the same thing as the rate of energy transfer. So it's just a little bit easier if we simplify this by letting Q over delta T equal P for power. The numerator terms are pretty easy to understand. A was the cross-sectional area of the window, and that was stated in the question as being one meter squared. Similarly, TH is rather easy because they told us that the warmer temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. TC, the cooler temperature, is zero degrees Celsius. So those are pretty easy. It's the denominator term that probably warrants further explanation. That term contains a sigma. Now we probably know from math and our studies of physics even that sigma means to take the sum of some terms. Now in this situation, we have a window that is made up of three layers. We have again the glass, the air, and then another layer of glass. What we're going to do is to take the sum of the length of each area divided by the thermal conductivity of that layer. Perhaps we can come down here and show what that work looks like. Why don't we first fill in the numbers for the first glass layer, this layer right here. Now the length of the glass layer was given to us. It was 0.5 centimeters. Notice that we'll convert it into meters, the standard unit. The K value for glass is the thermal conductivity of glass, and there should be a table in your textbook that gives you the thermal conductivities of glass and other materials. And my textbook gives a value for glass of 0.8 watts per meter degree Celsius. Now in fact, since there is not just one but two layers of glass, we can actually take this term and multiply it by two. That will account for the two layers of glass. But we're going to have to add in the value for the air layer as well. Now the air layer is one centimeter thick. Remember to convert that into meters. And the thermal conductivity of air as stated in my book is 0.0234 watts per meter degree Celsius. So we can pick up our calculators and enter this in in order to simplify it and we get 0.44 meters squared degrees Celsius per watt. If you have any questions about the units there, please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to clarify. So this value of 0.44 becomes the denominator of the energy transfer equation. And so now all we have to do is plug in all the known values into the equation. Now after plugging in, we wanna pay attention to units in this case. We've got the meters squared are going to cancel with the meters squared and the degrees Celsius will cancel with the degrees Celsius here. This watt will move up to the numerator, so the unit will end up being in watts. So the rest will be done on our calculator. And we should end up with approximately 52 watts as the answer to part A. Now in part B, we're asked to calculate the rate of energy transfer through one meter squared of just a single one centimeter thick pane of glass. So in this case, the window is quite simple. It's just one layer of glass. We can still use the same formula, of course, to calculate the rate of energy transfer. And perhaps like we did before, we can proceed by finding the denominator first. Now, in this case, it's not really a sum because there's only one layer. So we don't have to add multiple terms in that part of the equation. We'll come down here and technically we can kind of take off the sigma because we, again, we don't have to sum terms. We only have to find one. Now, the length of this glass layer, as stated, was one centimeter. Notice again, we're converting to meters and the thermal conductivity, as we said before, for glass is 0.8. We should get 0 0.0125 meters squared degrees Celsius per watt. That's the value for the ratio L divided by K that we're going to be plugging into the denominator of the equation. Now with all the other known values, remember the area was one meter squared and the temperatures were also the same, 23 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius, we can plug in. 
And then when we simplify that on our calculator, we should get approximately 1,840 watts. Now, in order to compare this value to the value of part A, in fact, why don't we remind ourselves what we got in part A. Here it is right here, 52 watts. To make the comparison between the two, we can simply divide them. And when we do that, we get a value of 35. So all that means is that the rate of energy transfer in part B is 35 times greater than the rate of energy transfer in part A. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.